All right. Well, I'm excited to be back here with my man, Luke Adler, um, for another episode of our respective podcasts here. And today we wanted to talk about um, something that just kind of came up organically and through our discussions and through some of the work he and I have been leading and honestly experiencing with each other in our own lives. And that's this kind of widespread crisis right now, you could say in a lot of ways, and just overall truth, it seems that I've, I've noticed in a lot of men I work with of the fact that a lot of men these days increasingly do not have um, very strong uh, friendships with other men like that. There's, there's just, uh, uh, they call it the friendship recession, I think is one article that was going around the New York times last year that said, um, you know, as of 2021, they pulled a bunch of people and over half of the men um, weren't actually satisfied with the type of friendships they had. And that this number has been going up every year since 1990, that um, the number of like solid friends men have has, has continued to decrease um, like to where some men just don't have any. And I think, you know, it's now we're recording this in 2023 coming out of the COVID pandemic, which I think really accelerated this for a lot of men. I know certainly in my practice that I was doing, which thankfully a lot of which what I was doing at the time was virtual. There were guys who were coming on to stuff that, you know, in the heart of the pandemic, like if they weren't on a call, they there was like no one for them to connect to the way life was structured at that time. And so we just really wanted to talk about how we've seen this show up in our lives, um, our clients' lives, and what we think one of the best paths forward for guys are. And I'd love to hear kind of your initial thoughts here, Luke, on, on this subject. Yeah. I, I, uh, there's so much nuance to what you're describing, Jason. And it's, I think part of what's struck us both is that in our last heart of shadow, um, you know, 10 week program, we had this powerful container that led to a community, a men's group, um, a group of men that have committed to staying together, you know, without your and my facilitation. Yeah. And that was something we intended, but of course we, we can't promise that we can set the stage for it. But I think now after having gone through the experience, it is something that we can, we can deliver on. We can, we can set it up, uh, for you to hit it out of the park, so to speak, to cultivate the conditions that are necessary for deep friendship that can be uh, um, supportive when life gets hard. And uh, I mean, life is not, never short of challenges. So to have a group of, of men that you can count on that are just right there to be able to go deep. Um, and I guess deep even feels cliche to share, but a group of men where you can just be real with, you know, you can just be all of who you are. And um, that was contrasted by a, a trip I took uh, with some friends um, recently, uh, a surfing trip. And there's a group of men who are in their 40s, 50s, and you know, we're, we're have families, we have careers, and we're taking time away from our, our people, our families, our lives, to bond, to surf, to hang out. Um, and there was a sense of... Um, I don't know if desperation is the right word, but maybe longing to connect, to have a deeper uh, connection with each other. And what was missing is is some leadership. Some mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? We're together. We've you know done this deliberate thing to move away from all of our responsibilities for a period of time. Someone has to set the stage for a more authentic conversation. Without that container, the default is into surfing, the next meal, women, whatever is kind of out there on the periphery in front of our senses to talk about. And th th there's there's more to jump in there too. I don't want to keep running, but I, I think I'm just kind of setting the stage from what I see. There's 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 not a uh, uh, a system or a culture set up 
for men to just be authentic, just be, be honest, real about what they're feeling, seeing. If anything, there's kind of an anti culture against mm-hmm. authenticity. And uh, as you're pointing out, there's, there's you know, in some cases horrific health outcomes because of that anti culture to men being authentic and real and just, I guess, just truthful with how they feel and how, how they're seeing things. Yeah, this is definitely something I've seen. You know, as I've been facilitating more and more men's groups over the last years of the default often for men coming in um, for all kinds of reasons, right? Often because of early life masculine culture being, you know, shaming, knocking guys down when they have a feeling or when they show a weakness or vulnerability or whatnot, like that kind of locker room energy, like severely impacts a lot of men I work with who were bullied or made fun of, and they carry that for a long time. And so there's like a having to relearn and and to trust men again, to be able to open up that I've seen over and over. And there's just the, the, the kind of the good side and the bad side of this, that for a lot of men are default and I fall prey to this all the time is to relate as I've once heard via tri- triangulation, meaning there's me, there's you, and then there's some third thing our attention is on. And how we bond is by actually being right next to each other, but putting our attention on that thing, whether it's a sports game, talking about women, talking about cars, or like the attention is out on the activity, um, not so much on each other, which I think is what's revelatory oftentimes for men that come into this work of like, wow, I'm actually here with you and feeling with you and getting to go deep with you. and that does take work to cultivate that if you've never been in that space before, you know, increasingly I get guys coming to me that are aware that they have a lack of male community in their, in their life, but they don't even know where to start. Like they got, they got jobs, they got kids, they're busy. You know, when we're young, we tend to be working jobs where there's kind of a a socialization and you go out afterwards or we're in school and you just have a lot of time to build those friendships And, you know, one of the things that um, I remember hearing that always struck me of part of why those young friendships tend to like get so deep inside of us is um, one of the techniques for (laughs) building closeness and connection they've, that that, that I was reading about was just unstructured downtime. So it's like literally just a certain amount of time with each other creates a a type of bonding that as we get older, it gets harder and harder to do. Um, but I just wanted to highlight before we move on to the, the health aspect here, because this is a piece of research that's been going around for a while and I've, I've named on other things. And I think we even talked about maybe last time you and I chatted of, yeah, they, they've done the studies and for men that self-report is feeling lonely. So not having enough connection in their life, the health risks are on par with smoking and being severely obese. Like in terms of how it can actually shorten your um, your lifespan to a significant degree, and I think this is just something that we've been seeing accelerating as c- culture has changed. Um, a lot of the places we used to go for community are kind of falling away. You know, social clubs for a lot of people, religions kind of not a thing anymore. Like there used to be places where we would build that kind of community that just doesn't really happen anymore as everything's kind of moved more virtual and mediated. There is in my experience, like a a hunger for depth of connection with other men and a realization that I need something here because I I know what happens either when I'm solo and I lone wolf it. And I've certainly tried that. A lot of men (laughs) I know have tried to try that and that doesn't work so well. Um, or when my whole world becomes my intimate partner or my family and all the troubles that that causes as well. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's the, gosh, there, there's a lot, there's a lot in that last statement. Um, when we make our partners, our whole world, our children, our you know, in-laws, our parents, our whole world, and essentially have this, this very yin container around us you could say feminine container 
but just, you know, a soft, loving, a highly emotional container. And we pour ourselves into that or we're stoic within that. Um, there's this big part of us that either gets suppressed um, or gets mushy. You know, we, we kind of overdo it in the emotional world. Or we're, if we get stoic, we're just kind of holding all the emotions in, you know, whichever way we've been socialized with our, with our upbringing. And, you know, you and I have said this a lot. There's, some, there's something that can only happen with other men, therapeutically. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's more than testosterone. It's, it, there's, a, there's a lot of nuance here. I'd love to kind of untangle this with you. But when you're with, when I'm with men, I can, um, I can be, I can kind of be tough. I can be strong. I can joke around. I can fuck around. But I can also have this culture of of being incredibly vulnerable. I get to be, I get to be all of me. And here's the funny thing: when I try to be that way with my wife and daughters, I'm like, oh, let me talk about farting and dick jokes, and like, they fucking hate it. You know, like my, my wife shuts me down so fast. And uh, it's it's clearly like a need in me to be a little rough and tumble every once in a while. I, mm-hmm. I need to cut loose. I need to not be so careful with my language. And, and we've used the term deadening. It, it's kind of deadening to just be sweet and soft all the time. I, I like that. But I need to be strong. I need to be, maybe strong is not the right word. Sometimes I need to be loud. I need to be direct. I need to be blunt. I need to be grass um you know so there's discernment implicit in all of this and i feel like when i'm with men i get to bring all all of my dimensionality um and i'm with when i'm with women i get to bring more of my softness and my kindness and i can bring some of my firmness too but there's just a level of that that kind of uh i don't know bluntness that just it doesn't feel appropriate when I'm in a group of women, it doesn't feel respectful. It doesn't feel like it lands well. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Jason? Because you're, you know, we live in these worlds. I think it's a, a a a real thing that can sometimes be hard to explain until yeah. you've like stepped into the room and you just feel the energetic shift. And I, you know, I, I love co-ed work, and I think there's a huge place for it as well. So I'm not saying that it's not possible, but there is something magical um, I've seen when men are with men and when women are with women. Of, um, you know, and I was reading a book recently about kind of fatherhood and the roots of it, and they were talking about um, the energetic cost of spending time with the opposite sex, like that. Just kind of at a, a biological level from going way back there there is an energetic cost in terms of managing sexuality and relationships and just all this stuff that's not necessarily there with other men um, so in one sense i find i actually just notice um, i get more rejuvenated because some part of me can go offline that doesn't have to be tracking certain dynamics with the feminine and with with, with women in particular um, now obviously this can get complex because if you're a gay man and you're spending time with men, you know, there's that layer there, but even still I've seen men who come in um, who are attracted to other men. There's just a different energy when you're in that container of, of that kind of whatever that manness we're talking about is. And I think a big part of it um, in, in my experience is just um, kind of knowing what it's like. There's just something about, Oh, I know what it's like to be in that kind of body and hold that kind of burden in life. And this is just one of the things I've seen over and over and over again, that there's, there's something to that lived experience us men often share of when we drop into a deep space and we're like, you know, whatever it is we're sharing about the hardest day, how we're depressed, how we don't want to get up or how we're exhausted. And another man just like looks at you and he's like, Totally been there. Totally get it, man. I could totally get it. And there's just immediately for me always like, a, oh, okay. I can, I can just relax into this. I don't have to pretend it's otherwise. These guys get it. I don't have to explain it. Uh, they, they just kind of know. And there's a real magic, I think, in power in that. And something that um, 
you know, part of why I think this is important is it's just something we've been doing for a very long time. It's kind of woven into uh, our humanness that men often spent time with other men and away from their families, away from their communities, right? You, you know, the most obvious example of this would be the hunt, right? Oftentimes it was the men that would go out and hunt. And that was often a deeply bonding experience where men learned to become men and kind of got their connection needs met in some way. And then they would come back and be with their families and orient and plug into that. But there was that sensation of going away and coming back. And there's just something I've seen to that, to that experience of how it impacts men's nervous systems. You know, why I don't, you know, I, like I said, I don't, I don't really know, but I know it's there. I know I feel it. I know there's that like kind of permission there that, that we get when we're with each other of some sense, like, I don't have to hold it together here because I'm not the leader of this, you know, group or family or, or whatever um, necessarily. I can just relax. And, um, you know, I think there's this unique also kind of quality and texture of masculine love that I think is a little different than the feminine. And, and maybe this is kind of what, uh, what I'm trying to get at here is there's something about being around other men where the, the love that goes back and forth isn't based on any kind of need. Like when we spend a weekend with you, I don't need shit from you. Like, right. Like I don't, there's not actually anything I need from you in terms of your attention or your presence in a way. There's just like, we get to just be with each other. I think that's maybe the shift. I think for a lot of us guys, we spend so much of our life in doing mode. And then when we're around a group of men, some, somehow our beingness gets to just flower. And that, for me, is incredibly nourishing. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful distillation of that nuance. Um, I think that's contrasted, of course, by you know, when you're with a group of men and there's not a permissibility to, or a culture that's set up to then share more deeply then you're left with kind of the default male culture, which is maybe to, to not talk about something that's mm -hmm. deep. Maybe to be tougher. Maybe to talk about people who are pussies or assholes or, um, you know, Joe Biden's problem with America, whatever, whatever it is you want to throw mm -hmm. in. Cynicism, sarcasm, culture, um, just tough macho culture. And of course, I think some of these health issues meant there's, that's not satisfying to men, right? That that's even deleterious to their sense of well-being. Just okay, let me just get together and be superficial and kind of act tough, but not get to that place in the hunt where we've pursued the animal, we've processed it. Now we're sitting by the fire, yeah. cooking some meat after exerting ourselves, doing something very macho and masculine and, and tough, and then. You know, the elder says, here's the talking stick. Let's, let's hear what's on your heart. That part of the hunt experience or that part of going to the bar to watch the Patriots game or the Jets game, it, it doesn't kick into the culture. And, and I think this is the thing that you and I are talking about. We're, we don't want to organize around a church and point our love towards Jesus or the guru or who it is, men aren't wanting to do that as much. There's still plenty of that. You know, watching sports isn't quite doing it just to, you know, release our suppressed rage and grief mm -hmm. that are, you know, like you watch, you watch, I've experienced this watching duck football. It's fucking embarrassing. The ducks are winning. I'm having a great day. And they start fucking losing <laughs> the week seven of the, of the college football league. And I'm fucking depressed. I'm like, yeah, this is my whole emotional well-being is caught up in these eighteen to twenty-one year old boys. I'm like, something is fucked up about how this is engineered. So, men don't want just the superficial layer, layer of relation, and they they don't they need more than just the emotional part. They need this bigger picture. And what you and I are doing is 
you know, we're, we're, we're on the edge of a movement that's creating a new culture for men where we get to be, we get to be our kind of primal animal selves and we get to be our kind of emotional loving selves too. And, and uh, we're, we're all so hungry for it. And it's, it's deep and it's, and it's strong and it's, it's heartening and it's dignifying. Um, it's a dignifying experience. And I love what you said about you get to be with each other and, and there's nothing we're needing from each other. I don't need you to give me a cuddle or give me a kiss or mm-hmm. let me grab your ass or be told that you love me. It's like being with a brother who just we're, we're sharing this experience and, and I can relax with you. I know I can tell you, Jason, what I'm struggling with, what I'm fucking pissed off about, what I'm sad about. And I can tell you, you know, where I'm killing it in my life, how things are going well. I, it's not just a complaining fest. It's a, it's a space for all of the experience. Mm-hmm. It's more than refreshing. It's, it's uh, it, it down, I, my whole nervous system can downshift in a way. Oh, I, can be, I guess we're, we're, we're hunting our authenticity in a way. We're hunting that. And that's what we can give each other is, is we can go on the hunt for what's real. Yeah. Uh, beautiful phrase. I love that. Hunting, hunting for authenticity, I think is a great way to describe um, also what I think is kind of this emerging new paradigm that, like you said, we're participating in, and that is really blossoming in a lot of ways in the men's movement. And that is this idea of like going away to do hard work um, and deepening with a group of men and then bringing the riches of that back home. In whereas you know, that used to be like going out and literally facing death on the outside in the world by hunting, by going to war, by exploring, like this was the legacy of men for a long time. And that was traditionally where men learned to be men. That's where we discover ourselves. Obviously, a lot of us here in the West, we're, we, we don't have to live like that anymore. Um, that's not on the table. And you can cre- recreate some of those experiences. And those those are important but I think you pointed to this new blend I've certainly participated in and we've helped create and been in of the going away to, to kind of face death, so to speak, and face the edges. But it's in the inner landscape now, right? So it's, it's that hunting for authenticity on the inside. Like, what, who am I? What's going on? What's unrevealed? What haven't I felt? And doing that in a container of other men is like, totally revelatory and i think it 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 harnesses and this is something we really saw in our last group the the kind of gift of how a lot of men traditionally um bond which is through doing something hard (laughs) there's just something to like doing something hard together as men and suddenly you're best friends you know i remember in uh i was just I was in college, I think, and a high school friend had a bachelor party. Um, but it was like, that, I think it was maybe around grad school time for him. So it was the kind of thing where he called together a bunch of people, but it was like three generations. There was high school friends, there was college friends, there was graduate friends. And we went um, backpacking in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And I, and I remember, you know, everybody flew in or drove in. And it was just like this total hodgepodge of men who had no real relation to each other. And it was super awkward like the first day. Cause you know, you kind of just pot up with who, you know, and you're like kind of talking, but then we started our backpacking trip and we hit a river. <laughs> and there was an actual river we had to cross that was pretty deep and it was pretty fast. So it was like, and we had backpack cons. And so it was like, Oh, this isn't joke time anymore. This is like, this is actually dangerous and we have to be at attention here and get everyone across safely. And you know, this whole process emerged of men going in and support each other. And it was hilarious. On the other side of that, everyone was best friends. It's just like the whole everything had shifted, right? Because like we got through this hard thing. Um, we did something together. But I think that's illustrative of what we get to recreate often in particularly in these retreat experiences now where men get to do something hard. It's just that the hard thing isn't necessarily climbing a mountain. It's what's inside of me that I've never known how to touch or access or free. 
honestly before? And how do I go there with the support of other men? And we've, you know, we saw a, a number of men really fucking go there and bring things forth from themselves that um, were really edgy and really vulnerable. And the bonding on the other side of that is just, has been extraordinary to witness. You know, it's something I've lived, but then to see it manifest in other men continually is just blows me away. It was incredible in that you know, you're, you're pointing to this, this inner part of the hunt, right? Like we've hunted, let's gather around the fire and excavate our inner experience. And the, 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 the outer hunt in the modern times is really that pursuit of maybe a career. Mm -hmm. maybe, and, you know, so a lot of men engage with that. They experience the, the challenges of that. You know, how do I make money in this world and support myself and engage in relationship? And I'm doing, I've often said that the men and women I work with, for that matter, are the ones that have followed the rules of society. You know, they've, 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 tried, they've worked hard, whether it's in school or in a job, and, and they've got a stable career. And it, maybe they even go to church because they were told that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. or something and um maybe they're starting to do yoga now i heard that's a good thing and, and they're working on their relationship they're doing they're good they're going to counseling they're talking but this inner world has not been explored yet and despite following this perfect path they're not happy more than that they're depressed they're they're not satiated with their life they've they've followed the rules of society and something's missing this is what we see on the outer stage of the path that we are prescribed is that there's not a a social system for inner work it's just not there it's not there no. you know, primary education college our our education system is set up for us to you know, survive to make money mm -hmm. so participate in society and commerce but it's it's not really set up for this inner resilience and as we've said, the pandemic just decimated and completely exposed that there's very there's a deficit of inner resilience, mm -hmm. this emotional resilience, spiritual resilience, lots of divorce, the rates of child abuse, spousal abuse. I, I'd be making it up, but maybe doubled or tripled during this time. It just wasn't the the psycho spiritual resources to be, you know in a challenged place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I often have been reflecting on, um, I'm part of many men's groups at this point of which you and I share one, but I have a group that meets locally here in LA that I've been in since, I don't know, 2014, you know, we meet twice a month, every other Monday night, a clockwork. And when COVID first hit, you know, we did some zooms for like a month or two and then we're in LA. So we have, you know, beautiful weather pretty much every time. And we quickly shifted to meeting in people's backyards, you know, at first with masks and then more distance. But um, I, I noticed that, you know, as I reflected, that gave me like the minimum viable dose of just connection with people in person. So I was just getting like, in addition to my family, I was like getting those two shots a month of seeing my men. And yeah, it was a slightly different structure. You know, we weren't close as physically as close to each other in proximity as we were. Um, but it, it gave me a resiliency to get through that. You know, in some ways I was like, I, for me, that was like preferable. Like there's less shit to do. I just see my, you know, it's great. Uh, have some longing for that time because I think I was getting my normal dose. Now had that happened a decade earlier, so to speak before, you know, I had a wife and kids and before I had established my men's group, that would have been brutal brutal for me um, i can absolutely feel as, as it was for many you know virtual clients i was working for and just having this um you know this web of men so to speak around me from these groups it, i think this is a key thing i just want to highlight here is it it is investing in other male friendships is an investment in your resiliency like as you build those up we're able to be more resilient in life. I mean, you and I have both been through some pretty intense shit in the last decade. And it's a lot easier when you have the men around. 
right? When you just have that place to go to bring the feelings or get the rage out or to get connected to or have someone support you, um, that it, in a way it's like day to day, it might not feel like it, but just that crucial moment of something happens and where do I turn? Mm -hmm. and, and just knowing there's just like, there's that group. I don't even have to think about it. There's, there's somewhere for this to go is, you know, in, in my opinion, like a total game changer and revolutionary and has changed my life and helped me navigate some pretty huge bumps. Just knowing that that group was there for me to turn to the, you guys and a couple of my other groups that can hold me through those times. And there's just something so powerful. I've seen it, you know, it's been mind blowing. We just, you and I wrapped our first heart of shadow just, you know, about a month and a half ago and the amount of life that has already happened for that group since then, I mean, like legitimate earth shattering uh, traumas and shifts and changes in their lives has been pretty extraordinary. Um, and had that happened six months earlier, these guys would have had so much less available to them in terms of how to support each other. So that it's one of those things that, you know, life hit hard, but they have more resilience between them now because they, they have a way to connect with each other and support each other and just somewhere to show up with this stuff. I think that's, you know, this phrase I often use um, with my clients of just, I think a lot of times men don't feel because we don't know what to do with our feelings or where to put them. Like literally, we don't know what to do with it. So we just avoid it or numb it or drink it out or ejaculate it out or whatever that might be. And a men's group is somewhere where it's like, oh, I have somewhere to bring this. I have somewhere to put this now. My feelings actually have somewhere to go um, in that, again, just changes the whole nervous system. It's incredible. That little nuance, that could be the kind of essence of the power of a men's group, right? So the default culture is, shit, I'm feeling something. I'm, I'm pissed. I'm sad. I'm horny, whatever. Something's coming up that's intense. It's overwhelming. Maybe it's something from my past that's getting activated with trauma response. And the default is, fuck, I got to shut this down. I got to, mm -hmm. I, I can't talk to my wife about this, or maybe I can't talk to my wife about this, but then it creates this weird codependent dynamic between, or my, my partner about this, where they're kind of my counselor or my mommy or whatever. And so that's not really helpful. I'm not. There's not an empowering dynamic there. Or in most cases, I just shut it down. Like, nope, not going to feel that. And so what we're pointing to is like that little moment, that little uh, response or reaction that's built into the brain that says, I can't feel this. I can't deal with this right now. This is not allowed in the structure of my life. This mm -hmm. means this feeling is not allowed to come out or forward, at least not in its full dynamism of expression. So to shift from, whoa, here's this feeling right onto my men's group. Like I'm doing this all the time. I'm I'm sending voice memos. I'm sending texts to my, my brothers. If I, you know, usually that's how I do it now. Um, it's fascinating what you're saying because what's what exists in me now is when there's an intense feeling, I'm pulling the phone, phone out and I'm sending it. Exactly. I'm just sending it out there. And rather than like the, the previous incarnation of me six, seven years ago was, here's a deep feeling. Let me go meditate. <laughs> let yeah. me do breath work. Um, like you said, let me go jack off. Let me watch a lot of Netflix. Let me get the fuck away from this primal power in me. And all we're saying is, hey, what if, what if you just had another choice where that could be shared, celebrated, honored, welcomed, definitely not shamed, just welcome, like, yeah, you know, right there with you. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the weather it just passes, it's gone, you're like, going back, back onto my purpose, my culture. It's a tiny, it's a, I guess the, the inner move, the inner and outer move there is small. But the impact is massive, massive. Yeah. Impact. And, and it can't, the thing that's hard about it, Jason, is that it can't happen 
this is what's so unique about the work we're talking about. It can't happen through a meditative practice. You can't just mantra this away or do sacred medicine to get rid of this. It has to be relational. Mm -hmm. This particular form of healing is relational. So there's no way to just, I just want, I hear that I heard this this week. I just want to, I just want to buy a piece of land, get some sheep and not fucking deal with anyone. I'm like, yeah, good luck with that. We'll see how long that lasts before all of a sudden you got a boyfriend again. You know, and there you are with your karmic load that you're 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 dealing with. So yeah, it's it's a it's a small it's a small move, but a but a massive transformation. And to get there, you know, it requires investing in relationship. Yeah, and I think you know, heart of shadow. It's so unique because. You know, like you and I said last week, you the work that you do and I do, we're we we like to ride the edge. We we've kind of left the shallow end of the pool and we're like, let's fucking go. Like we're done with just incremental change. We we want to move life forward. And so we create this environment that's totally safe, loving, provide a lot of education. And then we jump into the far end of the pool and we're like, all right, let's. Let's see what's underneath in the water here. Let's go for it. And we we lead some very deep work. And as a result, like you said, the bonding is profound. And then you walk away with, you know, seven, eight best friends. And then you're, you're off to the races. And that part's so key. I think the, again, I want to highlight the, the longevity that can come from these deep experiences. Yeah. So like ours was, you know, it was a virtual program, but it had a, a live retreat in it, which really kind of anchors, I think, those connections and relations in a way that then, um, I think, facilitates the ease of the ongoing connection like you were talking about. That Yeah, oh, I can just put this into the group or text these people because a certain depth has been established between us that I think can be hard to do necessarily if, if you haven't quite had that piece yet. And you know, this, again, this deep bonding that can happen with us when we do, when we face our edges, so to speak, as men is so, so important. And, you know, something you hear about all the time, I, I can't remember the exact phrase they use for it, but the, um, uh, it's survivor syndrome or whatever it is for, you know, guys who are in, uh, um, or platoons together. And there's like a feeling of, if one of them gets back home and gets relieved, he actually wants to go back because he doesn't want to like abandon his friends and these massively deep connections that a lot of guys um, that are in the service form and they come back to the States and they feel so hollow on the other side because like that level of camaraderie and brotherhood is so hard without these kind of intentional practices and communities we've talked about to recultivate. Um, but that doing the deep inner work together, I think it, it, it creates that bond. I've seen, you know, it creates that bond in the sense of just the time we've spent together. And, you know, it's not quite the right word for it, but it's the equivalent of like you form war stories. Yeah. Of, oh, remember when we did that thing or you did that crazy thing or we tried this or you led this or you revealed that thing. And there's these moments in time that we then like share as a group that, uh, it, it does something for us. And then we recount them and it becomes part of our history with each other and we give each other shit for them. And we, you know, it, it becomes part of that bonding. And I've just seen that particularly in this work we've been doing in the heart of shadow, this kind of deep inner work. Um, it creates that just because the, the work itself is so artistic and intuitive and you can never know where it's going to go in situations we found ourselves in where right, you can't, you can, you can write the craziness of some of the shit that, that that emerged in some of our circles that was just what was there and what needed to move. Um, but then in reflection, it's like, oh my God, we did that. That was so crazy, right? Like, can you can you imagine trying to explain that to anyone who wasn't in the room? And you're like, no, that's why we don't. <laughs> uh, we can we keep it keep it solid in between us. But th there really is that depth that we create together in that work by taking these vulnerable edges and you know the um the one big new york times article i sent you that went around last year on males and close friends yeah that was one of their number one prescriptions was for men to practice vulnerability with each other um which is one of those things that's 
easy to understand, but again, where a lot of men get lost is, well, how do I fucking do that? What does that mean? Right. And that's what a, a program, a men's group, something like Heart of Shadow can actually facilitate you in, in having the experience of that. That's often much easier when the right structure is created. Then it, it's almost like uh, conducive to that. And I think if you haven't had certain types of training, it can be hard for like, how do I get a group of, you know, a dozen men who have never met each other before to reveal their most vulnerable sides, right? If that takes work. And it's not without risk and it's not without, you know, challenge in making that happen, but it it's doable and we've seen it happen. And that's the beauty of facilitation and having an actual structure to, to go through as a group as well. Yeah. Skill facilitator has to be able to navigate the surface default culture of, of, you know, masculine, which is, you know, that, that macho piece. So the facilitator, if they don't deal with that in some way, right, then there's not going to be buy-in. Mm -hmm. I also want to speak to men who are kind of a little bit more macho out there. They're just like not as geared to vulnerability or not as comfortable with it. Like a lot of men that you and I work with, they already have some um, skill around being vulnerable, but there's some men that are like, Whoa, this is like, this is like a big step from, you know, just kind of burying my emotions. And I think men like, like that think they're going to have to like lose their balls if they, get into a men's group like oh i'm just gonna get and cry and talk about my feelings and be be a little, a little wimp and you know that's the misconception of of strength that strength is somehow like having this very hard you know uh, exoteric skeletal mm -hmm. shell that can withstand you know any slight and that if i get into a group where i'm going to talk about you know my feelings that i'm going to you know, also be totally emasculated. And I've, I've heard a lot of women talk about this too. Like they, you know, see the, like a man who they're kind of attracted to, like that man who's very tough, but they see a man who's, you know, maybe just all feelings. It's, it's not as uh, attractive to them. Um, and I think, well, not really, but I think the, the mixture, the admixture of them both, to be able to have strength, it's not necessarily like strength on the inside, softness on the outside. It's the malleability to move our strength around. If I need to push my power to my periphery, for example, in the springtime, the blood flow of the body moves from the core to the periphery because it's warmer outside. So the blood follows that warmth, like the sap in a tree moves from its core mm. to, the, to the leaves, right? It creates leaves and fruit. And in the winter, the blood moves to the core because it's colder outside. So the the organs are more warmed up. That's the dynamism of nature. And of course, we're an extension of that. So our work is really about learning to flow with the moment of like, oh, it's time for me to soften, just be soft. But I have that ability to mobilize my blood and my energy to be very firm to not necessarily be stuck in either. Like, I, I'm only yeah. on outside. I'm just a firm macho guy. We're talking about being able to do it all. That's what we're offering men. Sometimes the world wants us to be very direct, very firm, to lay it down. And other times we need to be soft, sweet, and kind. And it, it's not kind of like a, a fixed metaphor. It's like nature. We need to flow with the weather, the seasons. And um, that has to be trained and taught. And that, in a certain sense, has to be taught. So it, I mean, it has to be taught socially. This is a social dynamic. That we're pointing to and uh that training gets to occur in, in this bonded field and the other thing i want to highlight is i was listening to one of your podcasts the other day jason you talked about this you know kind of typical new age new ages and people say um you know babies are enlightened uh because <laughs> they're so so full of life right you had another metaphor besides babies you hear these things in the new age world. Babies are enlightened. You know, of course, babies haven't developed cognitively as yet, and their karma hasn't fully landed yet. And so, babies aren't really enlightened; they're just full of light, right? Mm -hmm. And in the same exactly. sense, you know, our relationships that we had when we were, you know, I don't know, eight to twelve or eight to thirteen, and we're going through puberty together, and we're bonding, we're discovering girls and sex. 
and it imprints so deeply on our psyche. And we think, oh, that's the pinnacle of male relationship, but we haven't grown up yet, right? We haven't been initiated into the world. So what we're really pointing into is, is I don't know if enlightenment is the right word or liberation, maybe more like freedom of being. Yeah. We're men now. We're, we're this work is for adult men. Right? We, maybe someday you and I'll work with teenagers and do rites of passage work. But right now we work with adult men and we're going to work with women at some point together. Um, this is like you've gone through some life already. And there's there's like a returning, I don't know if it's a returning, but a moving within to uncover that that deep ability to bond that we once had when we were younger. And I think the good news is, is we've done the big outward stroke. We've all moved into the world. We've gotten beat down by it a bit, we've beaten back, we've laid our track, we're figuring ourselves out in the world. And now the invitation is to integrate the, the inner world. And I think if there's a message it's that we, we need each other, as men, we need each other again. It's not, it's not a path to go at it alone. You know, the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's not a path. That is not the path for men, it's to go alone. It never really has been. Right? It's like the war stories, the hunting stories you're talking about. It's time for men to come back together. Not, you know, to live together, but to have some relationships together. Mm-hmm. And the five gifts that we have for one another, they are many, and they're so beneficial to society, to our partners. And um, yeah, that's what Heart Shadow is about. And I think, you know, within the next year and a half, we'll have an offering for women. One thing I want to highlight for women, really the gift that women have for each other, in you know, my experience leading Shadow Work for Women, is that they get full permission to be in their softness, and to be in their loveliness. And to be in their sensuality and and for their rage to come forward and their yeah. their hurt and the the games womanship that has to be played for competition for partners, all that gets to be revealed in this welcomed, loving way. Not necessarily a goddess culture. You know, some of that naturally comes forward as the essence of woman comes forward but more this culture for everything that they have, the women have to hold back around men or partners because they're having to mediate some of our emotions or they're trying to keep us tough. Mm-hmm. They get to let that go and they get just to be together and kind of nest, love on each other and explore parts of their sensuality, sexuality that maybe they don't feel safe to explore. And, you know, when that kind of stuff comes up in a women's group, I'll usually step out and have them create their own their own exercises around it so they feel even more safe. But I just wanted to plant that seed because you and I are going to be probably the hardest shadow thing for women in, in the next, you know, year and a half. Mm-hmm. And to say that the shadow work is, it transcends gender. Gender is important. We have to look at the socialization of being born into a body with a penis and a vagina and the uterus and ovaries. But quickly when we get underneath, not necessarily quickly, when we get underneath the gender, the pain is very similar. Yeah. So you and I are qualified, you know, we can lead women, women, we can lead men, and we're leading really in this deep style of work. Not there's we're not leading a women's group. Um for men we're leading more than men's group because we're men and we're familiar with that genderization, that socialization. But you know, when we lead women, it's the same kind of depth occurs, the same alchemy, the same power and bonding. It's just some of the cultural things are, are different. And so there's there's no assumption that we know what it's like to be a woman and know, know that world. But we do know how to lead deep work for men, for women, for co So, so. Um, I, I love all that. Uh, yeah. It, 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 it's human work. Right? Yeah, I think human. that's the thing underneath. And sometimes the the container to just getting there is sometimes different, right? That's where there's a gift in men being with men. There's a gift with women being with women. And some of our first groups we shared with each other, co-ed, right? Where you get get all that mixed together. And there's a whole other thing that can happen there. Um, But point being, you know, I think for men in particular, 
there is this kind of loneliness crisis. We're not, it's easier for men to default to a non-relational space mm-hmm. on the day to day. Right. I think this is something I, I, I do see as a difference between how men and women are moving through the world right now. A lot of women often at least have a couple people they're texting or in, like they're relating throughout their days and weeks. Whereas for us men, a lot of times it's very easy for that not to happen. We tend to, in, in my experience, and certainly something I live, um, when we're stressed, we tend to withdraw. So we don't actually go out with our energy to others. We pull in. And that's the thing that just decimates so many men over time, whether they're single or married or have families. They keep pulling all that stress in, like you said, or, or trying to eject it out of their body in some way, rather than actually bringing it into relationship with other people, which is one of the key things that can really change things. So for men, I think it is even more important to find this type of camaraderie or brotherhood or group that, um, you know, for, for guys that have been following me know that, yeah, my prescription for that is yeah. Get into a men's group. Like, I think that's the missing piece in this program that you and I um, are leading now. The heart of shadow is like the deepest cut of that you can pretty much get in terms of how deep you can go and the types of things that can surface with other men, which results in that kind of lifelong bonding. I think that's the thing that that the beautiful thing about this work is, you know, it can be therapeutic in a sense. There's that side of it of things can move and you can change your relationship to feelings and trauma and all kinds of stuff. And the piece that, you know, you don't necessarily get in a normal kind of one-on-one therapeutic relationship is you get that group, you get the brotherhood, you get that, that, that tribe around you of guys who just know what's up for you and that you can bring the honest truth to fast and quick and get that support when you need it. And, you know, as I like to say, sometimes also get that challenge or accountability or get your ass held to the fire of like, wow, you said you were going to do this or you're doing something pretty shitty there, man. You know, like it might be time to, you know, Take better care of yourself or your family or something, but from a place of love, not from a place of tearing down. And that's a shift that I've seen really happen with a lot of men I've worked with of the the light bulb moment of when the switch goes from, wow, I spent my whole life thinking other men were competition to actually the right men are going to be my greatest allies in life. They're going to be my greatest allies and champions. And so I want to spend more time with them. And that is a total game changer. Such an incredible feeling to be or have a community like that. And that, that I have that in various forms. Just, just knowing it is like a sense of strength. I feel behind me, alongside me. You look at the cost of our program, I think it's, where are we at? 3,026 hundred early birds, something like that. Um, some men might go, wow, that's, that's a lot of money, or some men, well, it's fine, they can afford that. I think it's right. That's kind of the cost of some of this work that's out there. And when you look at the benefit of it, right, this this is not just a 10-week program with a, you know, a uh, luxury retreat in the middle, and then, oh, cool, that was a great 10 weeks, it's over, and you know, wh- where's my next, uh, you know, moderately priced expensive mm-hmm. adult form of spiritual entertainment that's not what this is this is an investment in your health in your financial health your physical health your emotional spiritual health health of your family the health of your company your businesses this is an investment in that and in some ways it's quite affordable when you look at how it you know has the potential to last a lifetime if you want like our our men's group's been together for five years, six years, maybe. And we had an initial financial investment. We spent time together. There was a facilitation process. There's training involved. And now we're the owners of it. And the dividends, the what it's given back, back to us is invaluable. You can't put a price on it. It's priceless. So I would just say if you're out there, you know, you're resonating with our work, you like what we're saying, you like the testimonials on our part of Shadow Sight. Um, this is the real deal. This, this, we're not blowing smoke up your ass. This isn't some feel good fucking drum circle where we just, all we do is stare into each other's eyes and say, you're beautiful. 
I mean, I love that shit. And we're going to do some of it. It's a lifelong relationship with yourself and a group of men that can only grow. And I remember something our, one of my mentors told me after I'd done a few of these trainings. He said, Luke, the work just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And I believed him because I had already done two, two five-day trainings. And the second one was twice as deep as the first. Mm -hmm. And I could feel what he was pointing to. And he was not bullshitting. It just, the work has continued to deepen. It's gotten more subtle, more nuanced. It still can be, for me, in my own personal work, it, it can still be quite explosive, um, you know, firework-like. And so I, I just say, don't let money stop you around this. Um, if it's a lot for you, um, it, it is beyond worth it. And, you know, if, if you need some support, you can reach out to us. But it's a tight container. We've got 10, 12, I think 12 spaces. Oh, guys, yeah. You and I are focused, man. We, this is like, this is the time when Jason and I turn it all the way up. So, you know, we're giving it all. We're pouring it on. Because for us, this is more than just, you know, if we wanted to make a ton of money, you and I maybe would have become day traders or lawyers or, you know, we would have done something that's about money. This is our calling, right? This is what we care about. We care about culture shifting in the healthiest, most vital possible way. And um, we're kind of all in for this. So it's not kind of, we are all in. So you'll get the very best of Jason and I, our attention, our focus, our care. We will pour ourselves into this group because it's that important that you leave with a men's group it's established that has momentous momentum that can carry you forward, you know, in the challenges that are just part of life. They're happening. They're going to happen. We cannot outrun our shit. So with that, I'm, I'm fucking stoked. I'm fully inviting people to step up, to sign up, get on with us for this next one in the fall. Um, it's going to be fire. It's going to be absolutely lit. Yeah. And you can check out all the information for this program at heartofshadow.com. And like Luke said, reach out to us if you have any questions. And uh, only 12 spaces, so it'll, it'll fill up. So definitely don't, don't wait. And it is, you know, I was just talking to a client um, the other day about this, again, the same shift that you got to realize, particularly for those of you guys who like have families or have relationships, this is an investment in your family and your relationship. It actually is. You will be able to show up with more presence, more energy, more vitality, more love when you have this kind of group of men around you. I know it certainly has done that for me. And so this is the real deal. You know, loneliness is not something um, that has to be the case. There is a different way of connecting with other men out there. And our program isn't the only way to do it, but pretty damn good so we're definitely gonna toot our own horn a little bit there all right my man well pleasure being here with you as usual look forward to uh when we do this again soon yeah thanks jason great to see you i love love talking to you about this stuff and just so inspired by you know getting to work together and share this work <laughs>